We mentioned this yesterday, getting close to the end of the year, a little more than six weeks until we say goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021 and the 2021 Idaho legislative session. Yesterday here on the 208, we brought you perspective from Idaho Republican leadership about their goals and the direction that they see for the session. Today, Joe Paris got the other perspective from Democratic House Minority Leader Ilana Rebell. Oh, thinking about it nonstop. A little more than six weeks from now, Idaho lawmakers will head to the state capitol for the 2021 legislative session. Idaho House Minority Leader Alana Rubel says one thing atop their agenda is taking on Idaho's property tax, something they worked hard to address in 2020. Uh, we never ended up getting any of our bills heard on that. Uh, so we're going to make another run at that. We had six different pieces of legislation last session that were addressed to reducing people's property taxes. None of them were allowed a vote, or a hearing or a vote in the House. Another returning topic Democrats want to key in on, education in Idaho. We're continuing to work on educational issues, making sure that we still have teacher pay and a place where we can actually recruit and retain quality educators, particularly in an incredibly challenging environment right now. It's never been harder to be a teacher or more dangerous, um, and we need to make sure that we still have a competitive package that will actually keep teachers willing to teach. Of course, a major topic for everyone, dealing with the situation the COVID-19 pandemic has created. Rubel says it's very important to look at how people across the state were impacted and how the legislature can best help them. I think we may need to look very meaningfully at how we're going to assist those Idahoans who are most hard hit, um, those who have lost their homes, have lost their jobs, and are you know facing real food insecurity. Uh, we may need to look at how we're going to shore up some of our social safety net um, resources to make sure we don't end up with people starving and homeless. With the pandemic and reality it's caused in the medical system, Rubel says Democrats will certainly be working to defend Medicaid. She understands the criticism of it coming in over budget for the state, but believes it's crucial. I know that there's going to be a move to strip away Medicaid expansion. Um, and as overloaded as our hospitals are right now, can you even imagine what it would look like if all these waves of people hitting our emergency rooms and hitting our ICUs had no insurance uh, and what a disaster that would look like? Rubel points out that under law, hospitals have to care for people regardless of insurance, creating a situation where there is nobody to pick up the bill. Um, we can't be driving hospitals into bankruptcy and we can't be leaving people on the brink of death with no coverage. Some good news for Idaho. The state is projected to have a surplus of more than $580 million at the end of the fiscal year. Having extra money means taking on extra projects. Rubel believes there needs to be caution with the surplus, but that investing in education as well as Idaho's infrastructure system are at top of the list. To be sitting here with our roads and bridges falling down around us and in potentially unsafe states of disrepair while we're sitting on a $600, $600 million surplus is pretty hard to justify. Um, so I think we need to look really hard at some of the you know, really serious needs that the state has. All right, Joe, you talked about COVID when it comes to the state and how that's going to play out once the session begins. What about COVID concerns for the lawmakers that are actually going into the Capitol building? Yeah, for the lawmakers I've spoken with, there are some concerns about what the session will physically look like. Uh, the idea I'm getting from many lawmakers that it will essentially look a lot like the special session where you will see lawmakers wearing masks, but of course they're not mandated here in Idaho. They won't be mandated here in the Capitol. If there were to be some type of rule change on the House or Senate floor, that has to be approved by a two-thirds majority, so that likely isn't going to happen. What we will see, though, like we saw with the special session is that some lawmakers may have some of those plexiglass boards up against their actual desks on the floor. We know that they're going to be really pushing for people to distance and wear masks, but it won't be a requirement. I did hear, though, from leadership in both parties who say they really are employing, imploring their members to be smart and be safe. Okay, is it true, Joe, that if the governor were to say we want to put masks, make masks mandatory in the Capitol, that wouldn't apply to the floors that contain the House and the Senate? Yeah, that's right, Brian. As I alluded to, the lawmakers get to make their own rules for their respective houses. So if for some reason the governor did do a mask mandate, that wouldn't apply to the lawmakers while they were working uh, on those floors of the Capitol that technically belong to them. Super interesting. All right. Thank you very much, Joe, for making all that very clear.